In this video, we're going to learn a little bit about QR or quick response codes. The first thing you need to know is the small black and white squares represent binary digits. When these are scanned, they are translated into information. QR codes give us an example of error detection and correction. It's possible to make small changes to those white squares, either making a black square white or a white square black, and when we scan it, the code will still work. This is because those small changes are automatically detected and corrected. Of course, changing too many of those squares means that the QR code won't scan successfully, so we then have error detection, but no error correction. QR codes use something called FEC, or Forward Error Control. This is where we add extra information to our QR code so that the errors can be corrected. On the Support Files area, I've given you an original QR code, and then a series of codes where that original has been flipped, rotated, and had some of the bits removed. We can check to see if the code works by using an online tool. The original code is called QRFUN00, and when I scan it, it tells me that QR codes are fun. I can browse for additional codes, and in this case, I'm going to choose the mirror image. And this time when I open it, the system tells me it's not valid, which means that the errors have been detected, but they couldn't be corrected. Your job is to find a similar tool and try all of the files you've been given and know which ones are successful and which ones fail. Another thing that you can try is taking the original image, putting it into a graphics editor, and defacing those large squares on the corners. Start small, save the images, and see what happens. It turns out that those large squares help us align the image, and if they are removed or damaged, then the QR code won't work, and those errors can't be corrected. Things that can cause error QR codes to have issues are rips, marks, water damage, and reflected light. And the hope is that in most cases, our QR code can not only detect those errors, but correct them as well. In a broader context, it's possible for data to be corrupted through physical damages, such as scratch on a DVD, data transmission issues, electrical interference messing with Wi-Fi transmissions, and unreliable equipment. A reminder that the goal of error control is to detect errors so that we are always working with accurate information. If it can correct the errors as well, that's an added bonus. There's two different kinds of error control. We've already talked about forward error control where we add extra information. This both detects and corrects within reason. And our example is Parity and Solomon Reid, which is the algorithm that lies behind our QR codes. The other kind of error control is Automatic Repeat Request, or ARQ. The good thing about ARQ is it takes less space than FEC, and it does detect errors. The less good thing is that it can't correct the errors, so users will need to re-enter data or rescan the barcode. This is a good thing if you've put in your credit card information wrong, but not practical if you're hoping that a QR code is going to work, even if it does have an unfortunate rope.